Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today we're going to talk about what I imagine every artist has considered at one point or another, and that's how to make money from your art. I'll go over a variety of different options, including both active and passive income, so whether you're looking to make art your full-time job or just trying to make some money on the side with it, this video should hopefully have something helpful in it for you. I'm also probably missing a lot of potential ways to monetize art, but I don't want to recommend things I haven't tried myself, so what I'm going to suggest is largely limited to things I've done, considered doing, or at least heard good things about. There are probably a million other methods out there that I just haven't tried or thought of, so don't at me, but please do drop it in the comments if you're willing to. Moving on though, let's start with the active income options, because they're usually more common and easier, despite being significantly more time consuming. And if we're talking about common, we're obviously going to start with the one way that every artist ever already knows when it comes to making money from art, and that's commissions. The one main reason people buy art is because they feel a personal connection to it, which I've talked about before in a previous video. And the easiest and most straightforward way to make that personal connection with a potential customer is to draw what they want how they want it, which is why commissions are easily the most popular and generally accepted, if not almost expected, way to sell artwork. Even if someone isn't in love with your art style, or you as a creator, to the point that they're willing to buy something you made simply because you made it and they like how you made it, you can still make them want to buy stuff from you if the stuff you're making them want to buy happens to be their OC, favorite character, Sona, friend, family member, or whatever else they love so much that they want to see it drawn in a very particular way. Commissions are also the most popular way to make money from art, because of the extensive variety of ways that you can sell them. You don't have to just draw character art commissions. You can sell icon commissions, graphic design or overlay commissions, character design commissions, 3D model commissions, music commissions, murals, merch design commissions, chibi commissions, emote commissions. I'm so sick of saying the word commission, so I'm going to stop, but you get the point here. People will always be willing to buy art if that art is of subject matter that they're interested in. And selling commissions means that the bottom line is that that requirement is always going to be met, which means you have the ultimate freedom when it comes to the medium you want to offer them in. You can do whatever you want, whatever you're good at, whatever's easy for you. Before I move on from commissions, I also want to mention studios. I'll show some examples on screen here, but online studios are a lesser known option for artists when it comes to doing commission work. They're basically just groups of artists that market themselves as a unit rather than individuals, which allows for easier marketing to potential clients, because it allows the studio to offer a bigger variety of services. For example, if a client wants a character designed for a video game, an art studio with a character designer, an illustrator, and a 3D modeler could fulfill every need that client had. The person or persons in charge of the studio usually markets themselves to clients, which saves the individual artists a lot of time and effort when it comes to actually finding commission work. And they also handle assigning those artists the project that they'd be the best fit for. They're not necessarily easy to get hired into, and those in charge do take a cut of the profits, but they're still a very good option to consider, especially for artists who aren't good at or fond of marketing themselves and finding clients. Next active income option for selling your art is conventions, street fairs, art walks, and really any kind of event that allows you to purchase or rent a space in which you can sell your stuff. This is a really good way to connect with the community and take advantage of a market in which a lot of attendees tend to come, at least in some part, to buy art, often on impulse. Basically like having a tiny little in-person store for a weekend, which is not only helpful when it comes to making sales, but it's also a good way to get practice basically pitching and selling your work to customers in person, especially if you offer operate largely online. The only downside is that these events are often few and far between. Even if you live in a major city, there's usually only a handful of conventions a year in any one city. And while smaller one-day street fair or art walk type events might be slightly more frequent, they're less attended, harder to find, and basically just supplementary income compared to what you could make at a weekend-long convention with an audience that's probably particularly interested in your type of work, assuming you make something pop culture related. You also need to keep in mind that in almost every case, you have to apply to get into these events. So not only are they not nearly as plentiful as they would need to be to be a consistent income, you can't even count on getting into them. What that means is that either conventions and similar events kind of have to be just supplemental side income, or if you want that to be your main source of income, you're going to have to travel around in order to attend and table at an adequate number of events, at which point you're going to incur travel costs, and that's on top of the cost of the table itself, which could usually be anywhere from $100 to $700, as well as the cost of your merch itself. So that's something you need to consider when it comes to planning for profits. It can be a risky business when you never know how well you'll do at a con or if you'll get into enough of them, but it's a worthwhile thing to try out and see if it's worth it for you anyway. Another active income option is industry or contract work, which is basically commissions, but on a salaried or at least longer term basis, working for a company, organization, or group for the duration of a project, usually. Obviously, these are harder positions to land, but they can really build up your resume for future positions as soon as you get even one, and they allow for at least temporarily consistent income. 
I'll be doing a video in the near future on how to get industry work based on my experience doing it and hiring other artists for it. But the most important statement I want to make in the meantime is that contrary to popular belief, you do not need an art degree to get industry work. You need a very strong portfolio, and that portfolio needs to be tailored to the position that you're applying for. Or it at least needs to have a specific section of it that is. ArtStation is the leading platform when it comes to finding open jobs, and it's what I personally have the most experience with, so it's also what I would recommend. If you're interested in more information on this type of work and how to tailor your portfolio, resume, and cover letter to optimize your chances of getting it, keep an eye out because I'll have a video on the topic within the next couple weeks. Finally, for active income methods of making money from your art, I think zines are also worth mentioning. Zines, if you're unfamiliar, are compilations of work from many artists surrounding one major central theme, which is usually a piece of media or a character from a piece of media. They're generally run by a team of mods, and they aren't officially licensed or endorsed by the piece of media they're basing the zine on, so they're almost exclusively fan projects, occasionally original projects. Generally speaking, zines fall into one of three categories, for profit, charity, or free. Obviously, you will not be making money on a zine that falls into either of the last categories, but they're still very much worthwhile pursuits to look into. Regardless, the for-profit option presents a pretty good opportunity to make at least a small amount of income on the side from your work if you do enough of them. They're not huge money makers because not only do they have to cover production costs with their profits, but the income made beyond that point is then split amongst the team of usually anywhere from 20 to 100 artists. Still, they're awesome opportunities that you could make some money from, and even if you don't, you get to connect with communities you're passionate about, contribute something you're proud of, and then use that in your portfolio, as well as the experience on your resume. Twitter is, in my opinion, the best place to find open zine applications but Tumblr also has a pretty active community for it. Just search through the zine applications or zine apps hashtags or follow accounts that promote and share them. Anyway, moving on to passive income. The biggest and most successful method I know is selling your work via an online store. There are a million options out there to suit your preferences. So no matter what you're selling or how you're selling it, there's a platform for you. If you have no physical merch of your own and you just want a fast and easy way to put your work on items, prints, apparel, and so on without much commitment, use Redbubble or Society6. If you want to focus exclusively on art prints and you don't want to make them yourself, use Inprint. If you make your own merch by hand, Etsy. If you use a dropshipping company, use Etsy, Shopify, or the millions of other options out there. If you're selling digital downloads, try Gumroad, Etsy, or even Ko-fi. The profits won't always be amazing right away, especially if you don't have a huge following yet or you're using something with lower profit margins like Redbubble or Society6, but it builds up over time and some income is better than no income. Next, assets. If you make brushes, patterns, or textures for art programs, or fonts, or graphic design templates, or overlays, motion graphics templates, royalty-free music, anything a creator could use in their own work, there's a place for you to sell that, and there's a huge market for it. Sites like Creative Market, Design Bundles, and Gumroad all allow people who sell these types of media to make a solid income from it while also protecting their licensing rights. And even if you've just made a couple brushes or one font or one template, you don't need to be making this your job. You could just be selling this one thing you made for yourself on the side and generating some income for it. It. My next passive income suggestion is a little more commitment heavy though, in comparison, and it's online classes. In the past, I've religiously recommended that you take online courses for art because there are just so many awesome ones out there. But if you're confident in your skills and your ability to offer a learning experience to other artists, you could also consider making and selling your own courses. Just as I've recommended Skillshare, Udemy, and Domestica in the past for learning experiences, they're just as prosperous and helpful for teaching opportunities, and they all have huge platforms that make selling your courses as easy as possible. They take care of marketing, along with a gigantic cut of your profits, of course, and they offer versatile and user-friendly ways to create your own courses on their platforms rather than having to actually make, program, and host them on your own. While this is undeniably a high-effort passive income option, it's also a high-reward option if you either have have a big enough following or good enough course material. And once you've made it, you have to do very little to maintain that income, aside from give feedback to your students on their final projects and community discussions. Finally, the last passive income option I'd like to recommend is a little different because it's less online focused and more community focused. Most cities have at least a handful of art galleries, and most of those art galleries accept applications from local artists to display and sell their work. Yes, they'll take a cut of whatever sells, but especially if you don't have a big audience of your own, it's worth your time to take advantage 
advantage of the existing market that galleries like this offer, even if it means making slightly less than you normally would from a sale. You might also find luck in local coffee shops. I know Starbucks used to let local artists display and sell their work a long time ago, and while their corporate asses have obviously stopped supporting independent artists, smaller, independent cafes still keep up the practice. There are a lot of third-party options like this that you can look into, especially if you live in a big, major city with a significant art community. And in my experience, there are even some city-sponsored options with the initiative to support and enable local artists to succeed. Online marketing and sales options are hugely valuable, but your local community probably has a wide variety of promising opportunities too, if you're willing to put the time and effort into looking for them. All right, that concludes my list of money-making art tips. I'm certainly not nearly as rich as I'd like to be myself, so take it all with a grain of salt, but hopefully you guys found something helpful here. Finally, as always, big thank you to my channel members, Cafe Soleil and Lotus Dreams Art. If you'd like to join them in supporting my art, channel, and content overall, please check out my channel memberships. You help me out, and you get a bunch of cool perks, all for only $2.99 a month. Like, for example, entry into a draw to be the month's featured artist. And September's is Café Soleil. Not only does Soleil make the amazing, adorable art that you're seeing on screen right now, she also has her own YouTube channel that'll be linked in the card above. And she's a fantastic singer and aspiring music producer. I'll link all of her social media both on screen and in the description and pinned comment, so please go check out her content. She's awesome. Okay, infomercial over. I'm sorry. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.